Anna Krakatoa's crater has collapsed. The Indonesian tsunami volcano lost two-thirds of its height because it slid into the ocean, causing the tsunami last Saturday night. And these are the images of Anna Krakatoa, as we see. It lies in an island chain, volcanic island chains of the Indonesian area near, it's near Jakarta, south of Singapore, south of Borneo, for those of us who don't know exactly where it is. So these are tremendous earth changes, as we can see. The Indonesian tsunami volcano lost two-thirds of its height. It caused a tsunami that killed more than 400 people last week, and it lost more than two-thirds of its height following the eruption which triggered the killer waves. And it's, I'm astonished to see that it's so dark and black ash. It's, it's, these are colored images, of course, but you see that it's very dark and a tremendous ash cloud going up with that, of course. Um, there are also, uh, if you see this image uh, having to do with the Atacricatoa that looks so dark, there are, uh, behind this ash cloud, there's another ash cloud. I'm wondering if that is an underwater part of the volcano erupting underwater as well. You can see what I'm talking about is here on the upper left-hand side. To me, that's not a cloud. That's uh, a similar type of an ash cloud from the volcano, from the eruption. Now, the visual analysis by the Indonesian Volcanology Agency found the volcano has lost more than two-thirds of its height an official said on Saturday, Anna Krakatoa means Anak meaning the child of Krakatoa, which used to stand at 1,109 feet, that's about 338 meters. The height was now just 110 meters, so it lost about two thirds of its height. The agency estimated the volcano lost between 150 and 180 million cubic meters of material as massive amounts of rock and ash have been slowly sliding to the sea following a series of eruptions. So this is the amount of cubic uh, meters uh, that um, the scientists say that the Long Valley Caldera of California would uh, erupt the next eruption. The 140 cubic, well, this is meters, but we're talking about miles in uh, the Long Valley of Caldera. That's the upcoming video I'm going to repost for you. It's the difference between miles and meters. Cubic meters is almost nothing, as opposed to cubic miles. Uh, a meter, as we know, is a yard. So a mile is, of course, a huge, a huge difference from the, from the yard. Now, Anak Krakatoa is now much shorter Usually you can see the peak from the observatory post, but you cannot now. This is what Wawan Irawan, a senior official of the agency, told AFP. Before and after satellite images taken by Japan's space agency showed that a two square kilometer chunk of the volcanic island collapsed into the water. And you can also see on the image on the right, the sat, sat image on the right showing uh, concentric uh, circles around the island that has collapsed. What is that? Is that a part of the tsunami or is, what is going on there? I don't know. But um, these are the satellite images of Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and they clearly show the changes of the Anak Krakatoa before and after the eruption. The crater status has been raised to high alert. The second highest warning on Indonesia, four point danger scale, and as we know, it's still erupting. Uh, if you go to Volcano Discovery, uh, the current status as of today, okay, this today being, of course, December 30th, it is still erupting. When they have webcams, they can, uh, I'll leave a link below for you, you can see that as well, you can see the webcams and the Krakatoa Volcano videos, and uh, yes, the status is still red. Explosive, construction of cinder cone Anak Krakatoa inside the caldera formed by the 
1883 eruption, frequent strombolian activity. And it has also the dates there from uh, keeping records from going back to 1530 up to, of course, the latest eruption on the 22nd of December 2018, which, of course, eruption caused the tsunami. So I'll leave a link below for you for that as well. But going back to this, the crater status raised to high alert, the second highest warning on Indonesia, four point da dagger danger scales from number four out of five. The exclusion zone has been extended from two to five kilometers, that's uh, from 1.2 to three miles. A week after the tsunami, thousands of Indonesian Muslims attended a mass prayer on Saturday to remember the victims and pray for the safety of their tsunami-prone hometown, residents of Pandeg Glang Regency, which was hit the hardest by this disaster, gathered in the early morning, some in tears as they chanted their prayers. Quote, I prayed for the victims, I also prayed for the safety of the people who live in the tsunami-affected area, and quote, said Dadan Suriana, a tsunami survivor. And then a fellow a congregant, Dian Rosdiana said, my prayer is for the victims to get help and be granted patience, and I also pray the government will immediately help us to rebuild, to provide clothes and food, or at least to give us moral support. The exclusion zone is still around Anak Krakatoa, extended from two to five kilometers because it's still spewing ash. And this is what you can clearly see here. Uh, the whole area is uh, blackened out by this uh, ongoing ash cloud. Authorities said at least 426 people lost their lives, 23 are still missing. Some 7,202 people suffered injuries and nearly 1,300 homes were destroyed after the waves crashed into the coastlines of Western Java Island and South Sumatra. More than 40,000 people have been evacuated for fear of another tsunami as Anak Krakatoa continues to rumble. So it's still active as we know and uh, we don't know if it's going to keep on uh, sinking and sloughing off and sliding into the sea causing more tsunamis. Indonesia a vast Southeast Asian archipelago, lying, of course, on the Ring of Fire, is one of the most disaster-hit nations on Earth due to its position straddling the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, where tectonic plates collide. And uh, as we also said, you'll see the previous uh, video from yesterday, we also had an eruption of the Cleveland volcano in Alaska, in the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, and uh, that again is on the Ring of Fire. So something very obviously uh, strong is happening in the Ring of Fire, it's very active. Uh, besides the fact that we had the hot spot in the middle, the uh, Kilauea volcano erupting um, in the early summer for over two or three months. I'll leave a link below, this is on fizz.org. Now, as we know, it's still rumbling. It triggered the deadly tsunami emerging from the sea around the legendary Krakatoa. 90 years ago has been on high alert eruption watch list for the past decade. So 90 years ago it came erupting, emerging from the sea, so it's very young. Anak Krakatoa is, actually means the child of Krakatoa, has been active since June occasionally sending massive plumes of ash high into the sky. And in October, a tour boat was nearly hit by lava bombs from this erupting volcano. As we know, there are sites, one of them being Volcano Discovery, and I'll leave a link below for you for that, that um, has books and tra volcano travel. Uh, in other words, you can book uh, a, a volcano travel adventure, and if you're, whether you're a professional, uh, volcanologist, geologist, or just a photographer, and you just want to, or just want to see what a volcano looks like up close, um, they have guided tours to various volcanoes across the world. And uh, they also, of course, ha they ha did have two Kilauea, they also have two Krakatoa. Uh, so whoever's interested can go <laughs> if they want to risk that. Um, so experts say 
uh, Anna Krakatoa emerged around 1928 in the caldera of the Krakatoa volcano, a volcanic island that violently erupted in 1883. With subsequent lava flows, it grew from a submarine setting to become a small volcanic island with a cone standing at an altitude of around 300 meters, 1,000 feet above sea level. Well, that has gone down two-thirds, as we said before. So that has changed drastically. Since its birth, since it emerged 90 years ago, Anak Krakatoa has been in a state of semi-continuous eruptive activity. It was growing bigger as it experienced eruptions every two to three years. Volcanology professor Ray Cass from Monash University in Australia says, he said most of the eruptions are relatively small on the scale of explosion uh, eruptions, and there's also eruptions that produce lava flows. Cass said the latest event appeared to be a relatively small explosive eruption, but could then have triggered or coincided with a submarine event like the landslide or earthquake causing the deadly tsunami. No one lives on the island, of course, but the peak is popular with tourists and is a major study area for volcanologists. The island is part of the Yujung Kulon National Park, demonstrating an ongoing evolution of geological processes since the Krakatoa eruption. UNESCO says on its World Heritage site listing for, uh, for the area, when Krakatoa erupted August 27, 1883, it shot a column of ash more than 12 miles into the air in a series of powerful explosions that were heard in Australia and even up to 4,500 kilometers away near Mauritius. The massive cloud of ash plunged the area into darkness for two days. The dust gave rise to spectacular sunsets and sunrises around the world. And the following year, the disrupted, it disrupted weather patterns for years. Worldwide, that is. The tsunami triggered by the eruption killed more than 36,000 people at that time in one of the world's worst natural disasters. Indonesia's proximity to the junction of three continental plates, which jostle under immense pressure, makes it particularly vulnerable to earthquakes and eruptions. That's the um, Indo-Australian plate, the Eurasian plate, and the Pacific Plate, and they all meet there. <laughs> uh, well, okay, that, well, you'll see that on the map. So it's still active, it's still ongoing, but they have uh, the exclusion zones because they fear that it can keep on sliding because of the eruptions sliding into the sea, perhaps will cause another tsunami. I'll leave links below for you for this from fizz.org. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.